Hey, good morning campers. This is another day, second day of infamy. Um, back at work on this picture. Uh, today, uh, music review is going to be Jethro Toll, Bungle in the Jungle. It's like, you know, do I get TP for my bunghole? <laughs> Hey, uh, the reason why I'm doing this song, it popped up in a playlist, but uh, there's this guy I I knew at one time, uh, his name was Nader, an old in guy from Iran, kind of like, uh, kind of like, he was, dude, he was in a pinch, dude, there was people that were using and abusing this guy, I tell you, he was uh, living in the back of a pizza shop, here illegally, and uh, people knew it, and it was right after 9-11. The guy was scared to death to do anything. He wasn't a terrorist or nothing, but uh, you know, he was just a guy that came here after 72, after uh, fucking Carter, you know, he he kind of talked like that to you. He cussed a lot and he blamed a lot of stuff on Carter uh, in 1972, something about the, uh, when they, uh, the United States went into the Iran and they... Uh, Overthrew the government, whatever. He came here to escape it. Anyways. Why Jethro Toll and bringing up this guy Nader? Nader loved Jethro Toll. You know, he, he would go, Jethro Toll would kick his ass. He stands on one foot, plays the, you know, plays, yeah, stands on one foot, plays the flute. He kick his ass. You know, he thought that was like a symbol of toughness in a sense. But, uh, anyways, let's get on with the Jethro Toll. I don't listen to a whole bunch of Jethro Toll. Jethro Toll. He's got lions, they're pissed off at the beginning of his songs. He kicked their ass. kind of get the feel that this was like kind of written maybe in the 70s right around the Vietnam era maybe uh, yeah that's why I think the whole reference is, uh, is behind it all maybe you know but uh, so far man I, I really have to say I really like the guitar tone you know it's something that it uh, yeah, I, I don't, I never really would have said, hey, Jethro Tull's got killer guitar tone ever, but this is the first time I've really sat down and listened to him and tried to really pick him apart. And the guitar tone to me is what really draws me in. And, and you know what? I would kind of consider them a kind of a metal band. You know, they are kind of got a metal edge to it, man. I mean, the solos, the hard rhythms. I mean, I could see this going to the same night as Black Sabbath. Jimi Hendrix. Anyways, back with the music.
Sounded like the song was kind of short, three minutes. Short songs are cool, man. I like short songs. I could, if I I was kind of thinking, I, I, if I was in this band, I would, I would probably, they probably got longer songs. They could pull it off, man. They got, they got a flute, man. I mean, they can have flute solos. Flute breakdown. You know, I can picture it. Maybe hardcore bands need to take up the flute and stand on one foot and blow. Then they'd be fucking really hardcore. I only throw down when the flute plays. Now, I didn't uh, Jethro Tull uh, beat Metallica in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Now, kind of looking back at the scenario of now what Metallica is now to uh, to the years that Jethro Tull had before them, you know, I almost have to agree with it now. I mean, the first four Metallica albums were fucking badass, dude. It, the, the, you can't top them. I mean... They're, that's the reason why they're the top of the four. I mean, the big four. But it was the writing, man. I I have to say, my, uh, Dave Mustaine had his day. You know, he beat he actually beat Meg, uh, Metallica by being more thrash at the end of the day than Metallica. And... Slayer, I have to give it to them, mostly because they didn't stray from their sound too much. They did for one album, but they 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 quickly went right back to it. And uh, Inner Sandman might as well have been like uh, 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 Enter Walt Disneyland. I mean, it, uh, it sounded like it was made for like young kids. You know, their, their fans were growing up more. They were getting serious. Some of them were very political, especially charged after the song won. You know, you know anybody would send their kid off to die to, for democracy, you know. And the whole routine, of, you know, they, they kind of gave that, 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 you know, the vibe for one, man. It was very anti-war than blacken. That was a environmental song and... I'm mostly talking about Injustice for All, I guess, but Fire Fire with Fire, that's off of Riding the Lightning, you know. And and I Dave Mustaine, you know, during his writings, you know, he was kinda of political too. I guess that's kinda of where Jethro told with this bungle in the jungle, you know, they people were getting sent off to to go fight in the jungle and they had to fight like a tiger. That's what I'm just guessing, you know, by the era. I mean I might be wrong. Not always right. Actually, I'm not right a lot. Actually, I'm wrong a lot. But uh, I kind of just live with my mistakes, and I'm not like most people, you know, just afraid to make a mistake. Sometimes you got to make a few mistakes to to learn from from your things, man. I mean, trust me, man. I burnt my hand a few times, man. I'm going to go ahead and uh, see what other Jethro Toll songs I can get us into. Skating Away on Thin Ice. We're going to hear a little bit of this song. And I'm going to slow down on my drawing a little bit, man, like this. This is just a drawing of the draw. There's no rush order on this. This ain't no, hey, can you get it done so I can show my mom? Generations 
Okay, okay, I was probably wrong about the metal remark in Jethro Tull. I get kind of a strong, like, you know, flower hippie power thing from this song. But I could be wrong, man, you know, but uh, that's the way it is, you know. Sometimes you take a shot. I kind of miss those days where you go to the record store and you just kind of grab something and go, Yeah, I like the cover art. I, I don't know. And you read some of the song titles, you go, mm, I don't know. And then you have like three or four other CDs that you kind of want to get. And you're like, oh, do I want to get this? And you, you measure it down to like, you know, like, well, wow, this one's got 14 songs. And it uh, looks like it's a, uh, an hour long. And this one's got 23 songs. And it's 30 minutes long. And, you know, you kind of measure it out. And then to your liking for that last second, then you go, all right, I'll take this one. I kind of miss those days. Yeah, this has been a kind of a cool daily routine. You know, like I said, I mostly do these drawings uh, in the morning, man. It's like kind of my warm up before I go paint. And, uh, just so I feel like I've done something more in my day, you know, like, sometimes I feel, uh, you know, like, yeah, I may have done this painting all day, but that's all I've done. My life's too short. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll show, play some Too Short tomorrow. For those out there that haven't really listened to Too Short. Anyways, we're coming down to the 15 minute mark. I try to stop it right about 15 minutes. And, uh, and then I'll uh, start my day. I got my uh, iPad actually on my coffee cup. So right now my coffee's getting cold. Probably thrashing my iPad's enters with the steam or the moisture from the coffee coming up. Yeah. Anyways, you guys have a good day. Today is Tuesday. Second day after infamy. Be safe.